It is everywhere. It's on TikTok, it's on sitcoms, it's on the TV, it's on advertising. Porn is everywhere. But are Christians allowed to watch porn? And that's the question we're going to answer in this video. So all the things that we're going to say in this video is based on scripture. It's not just our personal opinion. It's actually we're going to look at scripture because as Christians, the Bible has the highest authority in all moral things and all ethical things and how we live our life. So we're not just having our pretty opinion, but we are basing our answers on scripture. Yes, indeed. Number one, honour the marital bed. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, it basically says that marriage is honourable to all and the bed undefiled. And this is the key, because if I bring imaginations or memories of things that I've looked at into my bed with me, then I've brought someone else in the bed with me. So then it's not just me and her, then it's me and her and some imagination thing. That's a problem. Now with that comes the thing that Jesus said in Matthew chapter five, I think verse 28. And he said that this is very difficult for anybody because Jesus didn't just come to fulfill the law, but he enhanced the law. He said, if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery. This is a tough one. That's Jesus's role, by the way, to make things tough. We're supposed to live up to where he wants us to live. So if we've already committed adultery just by lusting, that further puts on us that we shouldn't just be looking wherever we want to, to look, to see the things that we want to see. And let's be clear, the flesh wants to see some things, but... The thing to remember is that every single person is made in the image of God. Yes, indeed. They are created for a purpose, they are valued by God, they are loved by God, mm -hmm. they are not objects. And when we use porn, we view porn, we look at porn, we are treating those people as objects. And even if they've given their consent to be in that video, to be used as objects, as a Christian looking at them, you are not called to be looking at people as objects. You are called to love people. And if you're just looking at them to use them, to gratify yourself and to give yourself self-pleasure, you are using those people as objects for you, not for what sex is designed for, which is an intimacy, an act of intimacy, an act of union between um, a married couple. With that comes this. If we happen to be looking at porn or remembering what we have seen in porn and happen to be masturbating about it, that is not the proper use of our own body, let alone someone else's body. If we're made in the image of God and they are made in the image of God, nobody is supposed to be doing that to our souls. Yeah, and so that includes like, well, the question sometimes people can ask, so what if you're married and you're watching it together? Like, if, it still goes back to the thing that the married bed is not supposed to be defiled. Mm -hmm. The Bible is quite clear that marriage is between one man and one woman and it's not supposed to involve anybody else that includes it in our minds as well so watching it together you're just lusting off together and you're not enjoying actually your spouse you're enjoying somebody else um, in your mind and then you're not actually being intimate with your spouse you're actually sort of in your mind being intimate with someone else mm -hmm. and that's the thing sex itself is designed by the lord for intimacy it's for pleasure, for intimacy, yes, for children, if so the case may be, but also we're supposed to enjoy one another and it's one of these great gifts that God has given us to actually become so close and together with the other person. And this is where pornography is a big problem because if she were to have another imagination in her mind while we're in bed together does that mean that i'm not good enough for her or vice versa mm -hmm. does that mean that she's not good enough for me what a terrible thing that would be so we have to be a bit a bit careful yeah. how we allow our minds to run exactly yeah. and they've actually found that porn addiction has exactly the same effect on a person's brain as heroin that is not an addiction that god has ever called anyone to we're not lived to we're not called to be under something we're called to be more than conquerors and we are called to be in his kingdom it's not he does not call us for addiction and porn is addictive god wants us to be free he doesn't want us to be in bondage to anything and that includes our own minds it talks about the renewing of our minds that's right so what you have in here what you're letting in through your eyes is going to affect your brain somehow 
Yeah. But as Erin said, sex is supposed to be enjoyed by a married couple. And sometimes you will hear advice that says, well, just you want to spice things up. You know, <laughs> you've been married for a long time. Go watch pot. No, don't. Don't, don't take that, that route of spicing that things up. That is not good advice. Okay. You want to spice up your sex life? Talk about sex. Talk about it. What you, what you find attractive on the other person, go and get them some laundry, go and go and enjoy the bedroom, go and put some music on, experiment with each other. You don't need to bring porn into your, into your marriage to spice up your sex life. Just, just try new things and talk. That is really a big thing is talk about sex. And what you'll probably find is as you talk about it and explain what you do or don't like, and the other person goes, oh, okay, I understand now you'll both be probably a bit more switched on and a bit more warmed up and then, you know, get a bit, bit spicy. I mean, you're married. So. Well, that does have raise the question, but what if you're not married? Mm. Now, guys, we're not saying that this is a really easy thing to do. Mm. We're really not. But this is really a case when it does come to exercising the fruits of the spirit mm -hmm. and in particular, self-control mm -hmm. and patience. Are we saying it is easy? No. no we are not because our bodies are designed to want to be with someone we we desire intimacy mm -hmm. however mm -hmm. there is a proper order and a proper safety net that god has put in mm -hmm. front of us and that is to do those things inside of marriage and so in a time of singleness or when you're not married it's about exercising patience and self-control and just the same as the lord has designed our christian walk when we pursue good things like for example daily devotionals or praying you know learning and practicing our prayer and practicing discipline and so forth then our christian life blossoms the same thing happens when we practice our self-control and our patience with this thing too eventually if if god so sees that we should get married and be intimate with someone then that will blossom too because of the work that has been put in earlier in terms of patience and self-control yeah and if you're in that time when you're dating or in a time of singleness go and check out our, play our playlist about dating tips in the christian world mm -hmm. and until that time bye, bye.